Hey everyone, it's Riley here, and I just want to start off by saying thank you so much to everyone who supported my latest video with Lightning. This community is so positive, and honestly, I'm grateful you all allowed me to be a part of it. I also want to take this time to personally thank Sefi, as well as SoulDFFOO, who helped provide a majority of today's information, as well as allowed me to use some of their footage to help cover this character in full for you guys. And if you haven't heard of either of them, I'll leave a link to their channels below. I highly recommend checking them out if you'd like to enjoy some more DFFOO content. Now without further ado, let's dive into the rise and fall of Final Fantasy VII's main antagonist, Sephiroth. So let's start at the beginning. Sephiroth was first released as an event character during the time of Arc 1 Chapter 7, and the banner consisted of himself, Vincent, and Aiko. Sephiroth at the time of his initial release was actually a very good DPS unit to have on your roster. His S1 Fervent Blow, be a Brave Attack only, could literally break anything at touch with the massive amount of Brave Hits that it had. And during this early time of the game, that was honestly really good for one character to have. Basically, you would use his S1 and get a lot of Brave from it, then completely dominate a single target with his S2 ability, which by the way, also had Brave Hits before it did its HP attack. I guess you can say that the only flaw that Sephiroth had at the time, which was a minor one at that, was that his Genova buff had stacks. Therefore, Sephiroth had kind of a slow start at the beginning of the fight, but once he got going, he got going indeed. Sephiroth definitely solidified his spot as the main contender for the DPS units during this time. I'll also notate that yet again our time-traveling friend Saz was able to bring out the full potential of this amazing DPS unit. And honestly, during this early time of the game, no one can really compete with Sephiroth, and the DPS units that could honestly had a hard time doing so. Now let's move ahead to the release of his Lost Chapter, where the debut of his EX weapon, the Mako Katana, granted Sephiroth a really powerful EX ability called Black Materia. This ability had a gravity-like effect that reduces the enemy's brave to zero, which after being used, granted Sephiroth a free ability usage, which gave him some longevity with this kit. Honestly, that was a nice needed touch. This also provided a new unique buff for him called Reunion, which increased his max Brave by 10% and also gave him a Brave regen of 40% of his initial Brave. Keep in mind, this increased per stack, which Reunion had a max stack of 5. Sephiroth came to the front lines once again, thanks to his EX weapon and his extensions also gave his S1 a double HP dump, which was extremely good. A notable thing as well with Sephiroth, is that he completely crushed single target bosses. Not to say he didn't fare well with multiple targets either, since his EX did do 100% AoE damage, but with a single target boss, his damage output truly shined. Now let's fast forward a little bit to the long-awaited event that featured the debut of Sephiroth's EX+. His EX Plus granted him at 1 out of 3 max limit breaks 80% attack up right off the bat, while 2 out of 3 gave him at the start of the quest 3 stacks of Genova and 2 stacks of his reunion buffs. And finally, his 3 out of 3 would grant him overflow on all of his abilities by 30%. Now all of this for one DPS unit was actually really great. Since Sethroth now had his stacks at the start of the fight, he didn't suffer for such a slow start like he did before. Simply one use of his S1 for max stacks and then just go crazy pressing his S2 for those big beefy damage numbers. I'm also going to mention that his reunion stacks now only needed one use of his EX for max stacks, so he can take full advantage of that amazing Brave regen they gave him. It was also during this time where he was regarded as one of the three kings of the DPS, which consisted of Sephiroth, Ultimecia, and the Emperor. All these characters were highly favorable to us players as their max damage and potential were completely amazing at the time. Pair them up with either Saz, since all of them had little self buffs, or pair them with an Imperialer and an Enchanter, and just give any boss probably the worst day of their life. Sephiroth was at the highlight of his Defo career as a DPS unit, but as the saying goes, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And now, we get to... Well, a day that went down honestly in infamy for our main man Sephiroth. We get to the release of his burst and LD weapon, 
To which at first, people were extremely excited to see one of Final Fantasy franchise's most iconic villain receive. He swooped down in a showcase with, you guessed it, Saz as his party friend. And when we all heard that burst theme, at least for me, the nostalgia for Final Fantasy VII was in full effect. Seeing Sephiroth hit his usual max brave numbers was highly refreshing considering how Lufinia was during the time, and honestly still is. The first use of his LD ability gave a brand new debuff for him called Cellular Degradation. This unique debuff gave enemies melee impair- <clears throat> Sorry guys, not really sure what happened there. Anyways, as I was saying, this debuff gave enemies 30% brave damage increased on them, as well as a sap based off of enemies max brave by 10%. Sadly, the one thing Sephiroth really needed at this point was a rework. If you noticed, I never even mentioned that he had one. His potency on his S1 was at least now in the current state of the game, mediocre at best, but his S2 is still hitting pretty decent numbers, honestly. And this, unfortunately, was the true fall and decline of Sephiroth, and really anything. He was completely overshadowed by how well Lightning was on her BTN LD release, and how great Cloud was when he received his BTN LD just shortly after Sephiroth did. I will point out, though, that he did do very well for Rude's event, but he honestly did best in a friend support role rather than being in your actual party. Sadly, the memes for him just piled on, so much so, in fact, that he was eventually given the name Kakarov. However, I will say this though, if you were to pair him with someone like Saz, or anybody that can imperil and enchant, Sephiroth does really well. It's just hurtful to say that without at least one of these alongside him, he falls very flat. And it's strange to see such an iconic character in the Final Fantasy universe to honestly have fallen this far. But who knows, maybe one day Sephiroth will reign at the top yet again, as his kid has so much potential I'm sure the devs are just waiting to unleash it. But until that happens, we'll be lost in the never-ending sea of all the other DPS units that we have available. And with that guys, I'm going to end this discussion with a question. What do you think the devs could have done for our main man Sephiroth to make him a more prominent DPS? Does this give you hope for characters in the same boat as Sephiroth seeing a character like Garland being such an amazing DPS unit now? Or does this cause more concern in regards to characters like Sephiroth? Let me know what you guys think about this. I'd love to hear your opinions on this topic. And now, I want to personally thank all of you for sitting down and joining me in this discussion. Honestly, I really enjoy doing videos like this, and I'm really glad you guys enjoy it as well. And as always guys, I'll see you next time.